This is definitely not how you measure forests nowadays. With drones advancing, now there's a better way. Using LiDAR sensor on the drone, we were able to capture forested areas much faster and with a higher degree of precision. Today, we're going to be showing you the full process, including flight planning, gathering the date, as well as the post-processing. The drone you see behind me is the DJI M300 drone, together with the Tapa drone Hi-Res LiDAR. LiDAR data gathered over forests can give you many useful insights, such as ability to estimate the overall value of the forest, ability to classify trees, understand the sizes of trees, and many other things. And capturing this data with the drone is much faster and more accurate compared to traditional methods, which involve simply measuring the trees manually. And today we're going to be using GCS software for doing the flight planning for this mission. It allows us to do automated IMU calibrations for the LiDAR, as well as change many other important parameters of the mission. And compared to other solutions, it allows to plan flights for any LiDAR sensor on the market. So here you can see the map inside of eGCS. And now let's get started by planning our LiDAR mission. Let's click here on create a new route, and then let's create a new route from scratch. As the drone, let's select the DJI M300. And now let's select the LiDAR area tool. Now we can mark out the area that we want to survey. In this case, let's select an area of roughly this size. Now let's quickly go through the settings. First of all, we're going to be using the field of view angle of 70 degrees. Next, the flight height we'll be using is going to be 60 meters above the ground level. Flight speed, let's set to seven meters per second. For the side overlap, let's use 40%. In this case, we'll be collecting just the LiDAR data, which means that we don't have a camera on our drone, so our point cloud in this case will not be colorized. However, if you want to collect a colorized point cloud, you can also have a camera set up on your drone and you can collect images at the same time as you're collecting LiDAR data. This can help you make the objects on the ground more clearly understandable. So when you're scanning, for example, buildings, getting a colorized point cloud can help you a lot. But in this case, since we're going to be flying over a forest, our main interest is actually in the trees themselves. So colorized point cloud would be nice, but in this case, we will be running without it. Now, next you can see for the corner radius, I have it set to 20 meters. And the rest of the parameters we can leave as they are. Now, for LiDARs, one of the most important things is doing the calibration. So we're going to be adding a LiDAR IMU calibration segment at the very beginning of our mission. So let's select the pattern tool and then let's zoom into where we want the drone to perform it. Let's set it right here. So it's going to be done at an altitude of uh, 60 meters. So the same working altitude of our LiDAR mission. And the flight speed here, I'm going to set to 15 meters per second because I wanted to do it as fast as possible. And number of passes, in this case, one should be enough. Now also let's change the order of the segments. So I'm going to make sure that the LiDAR pattern will be performed before the LiDAR area scan. And then finally, after our LiDAR area mission, I'm also going to add one waypoint, which will simply bring the drone back to the starting point. And another important thing I'm going to be showing now is that since for this mission, most likely the drone will go out of the range of the RC, we're actually going to be setting the failsafe on the loss of RC to continue. This means that if the drone gets outside of the RC range and loses the connection to the RC, it will still keep going on the route, it will not stop. This is important in forestry missions, especially when you know you're gonna be flying quite far away, because it allows you to make sure that the data will still be gathered and that the mission will not be interrupted. Now, let's start by turning on our remote controller and turning on the drone. On the remote controller, let's go ahead and open up UGCS companion app. Okay, and so now we're just uploading the route to the drone. And now after the route is already uploaded, now we can take off. Uh, now, we, just to show you, we can go check on the LiDAR itself. Here, we can just make sure that the LEDs on the LiDAR are on and that this color indicates that the LiDAR is already recording the data. And now we can get into the data processing part. So here you can see in front of me, I have two folders. In this folder, these are the files we get from the uh, LiDAR itself. 
And then uh, we also have the files from the base station. In this case, it's only one file. But now let's go into the uh, data post processing just so you can see uh, how the full workflow is just so we can first get the LAS file out of it. So here you can see we have the uh, Topadron LiDAR post processing software open. And let's start by going to this LiDAR post processing tab, which you can see I already have open here in front of me. So here where we have the GNSS file, Let's click on upload and then let's select the uBlox file. So this one, this is, as you can see in the LiDAR folder. So let's open this up. Okay, and now you can see it automatically also selects the IMU file as well as the output folder. If we now go to this folder, you might notice that now there's two more files. So it created this nav file as well as the observation file. Then next under antenna offsets, since we were flying with the DJI M300 drone, then we can simply select this, so DJI M300. And then next for the base station, we can also go here, click on the upload button, and then we can navigate to our base station folder and then select this observation file. And uh, okay, so this is actually everything we uh, need to do initially. So you can see we have our flight location marked here, and then we have the base station's location here. Uh, and yeah, then basically we can get started. So now we can just press on start online and then wait for the software to create the uh, trace file. Okay, and now you can see that this calculation is done. And now let's go here in the LiDAR cloud uh, generation tab. And this is actually the tab where we're going to be getting the last file out of it. So where we're going to be generating that. And now let's start here from the drone files again. Now let's click here on select. Let's go then into the LiDAR uh, data folder and then let's select this PCAP file. Next, let's select the track file. So then for the track file, let's go here and this is our primary track that we have and let's select it and click here on uh, open. Next, in the strip alignment tab, let's select all data sets. And then for the calibration profile, we can leave this empty. And one last thing is that here where we have the trim track, let's click here and then just let's trim out uh, everything else from our LiDAR track. So, okay, now you can see I have the track trim. So now this is only the track through which we flew. And now everything is actually set and we can click here on start. And then here we can just click on yes in this dialog window and then you need to wait a bit. This might take uh, a bit of time. So the software manages to calculate the LAS file. Okay, and then once the data processing will be complete, this will be the output file that you'll be getting. So you will have this LAS file, which you can then use for LiDAR data processing. And now you can see I have actually LiDAR 360 software open, and I'm just gonna briefly show you the file that we got. Uh, we won't have time to go into a full data processing workflow for uh, this video, but I'm just gonna show in general, so what can you expect to get? So let's start here by adding data. Okay, and now let's select the LiDAR LAS file. Let's click here on open. Okay, so this is the initial data set that we get. And you can see, of course, here uh, now you might not understand a lot from these colors, but now uh, one of the easiest ways that I would recommend is just going here where it says display by, and then let's, for instance, select height. And already here you can see that now we are getting some more information. So here you can of course see the uh, buildings, you can see already the trees and so on. And so then of course here in LiDAR 360 we can do a lot of different things. So we can for instance cut out some points of this data set, meaning that we can for instance trim the borders of this a bit. In some cases where you might have some points which are outside the data set, you might get some point up in the air. You can of course cut out those as well. And uh, so here we can go through different tabs. So there's the tools section where you can, uh, you know, manipulate with the data set. Then there's the uh, processing section. And for us, what's also really interesting is that we can go here into the ALS forest and ALS means aerial LIDAR survey. And so here we have different tools which you can use specifically for the forestry case to process this data set. And then let me just show you what you can expect to get out of this. Okay, and here you can actually see this data set with some processing already done. 
And what's interesting is you can see, of course, here already all the trees shown up in uh, RGB. So Ladder 360 is quite powerful software if you want to use it for the forestry case because it allows you to do things such as automatic tree recognition. You can, of course, classify the ground points. Uh, it's also possible to, under to get a separate model of everything that is above the ground. And also you can do uh, measurement of the forest. You can understand the total amount of trees within the forest and you can do various different segmentations even by tree types. So it's quite powerful software. And if you guys are interested in seeing some more information on this, then let us know in the comments and we can film a separate video showing the data processing workflow. So, okay guys, I uh, hope this video was useful for you. If you want to see more interesting content, then make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe to our channel and see you in the next video. Bye.